Good to that guy's a beauty, eh? Hey guys, Jim here. Welcome in once again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a completely wildly different design, something that I had not come across before, recently came across this, and also was very unfamiliar with who designed this knife as well, and I still am, but I will try to give some information, uh, at least uh, direction to their social media or something down there. This is the brand new Concept Rafe. Now, I've had an opportunity to review several concept knives over the past year or two, and they've all impressed me specifically for how low their prices are. Case in point, this one's only $150. So, you know, they're, they're giving you budget price points, and I know there's going to be some newbie that's going to pop in here and go, How dare you call $150 a budget price point? It is. Go look through my videos. There are knives that are several thousand dollars a piece. There are several that are several hundred dollars a piece. When you're looking at the collector's mindset, no matter what it is, it could be knives, could be guns, could be shoes, could be hats, could be... Friggin' postage stamps. There are different price levels. And, and as collectors, you tend to spend more because you're hoping that the, the thing that you're buying is going to retain its value or appreciate in value. And when you're buying, I don't know, $50 knives at Walmart, they're not going to appreciate in value. That is a beater knife. That is absolutely a budget knife. And they don't really have a place here on my channel. And they generally don't have a place in the, the collector's community within their conversations. I mean, I'm sure everybody owns a couple in that price range just to truly beat up and destroy, but they're not what we like to talk about. So if you're going to come into a knife review video and bitch about how $150 isn't budget, then maybe YouTube isn't the place for you. Okay, anyway, let's, let's move on from that. Taking a look at the concept... Uh, I say this every video, but I really dig their packaging. They spent some time and money designing and manufacturing that, and then you still get a pouch inside of that nice packaging. So I think that there's some value to that for sure. And here is the knife. It is a tiny knife with a... 2.6 inch blade. This is definitely one of the smallest knives I've reviewed. And I will say this, it feels pretty robust. It feels pretty solid. And I think that's because it's made of titanium with these stainless steel liners. So it's got a little bit of heft to it. It's about uh, 3.8 ounces. So for its size, it's not lightweight. It's lightweight in the grand scheme of things in carrying a knife in your pocket. But for its uh, diminutive size, it is not lightweight. It feels quite substantial, quite robust. And it's got a surprisingly nice action, even though the flipper tab is very odd. And very odd really is going to be the topic of the day here with this knife. There's not much that's normal about it, to be honest with you. Ooh. Some of the things that makes it unique is the fact that they're using in a $150 knife an S35 VN blade and quite a unique design all the way around. And that helps this knife stand out among other offerings in this price range, especially the S35 VN due to its high material cost. 
Now, I'll be honest, I don't get the notch. I don't understand it. I'm all for being different. However, it seems like maybe it's more of a functional design choice rather than an aesthetic choice. I think maybe it's supposed to be a bottle opener. I mean, it's all I can think because of the way it's shaped. And I really can't get behind that if that's the case. That's, I mean, to to use that would be awkward and honestly dangerous being on a knife blade. Uh, I would hope that if you're going to do it, you're going to do it with the, the knife closed. But, I mean, it, the, everything about that is awkward. And I think far more awkward with it open and seemingly dangerous. If anything happened and that knife didn't actually go to full lock and you were trying to, you know, pry open a bottle and it collapsed and next thing you know, you got a sharp blade hitting you. I don't know. So that's my personal thoughts on that. But I don't know that it was designed actually to be a bottle opener. That would be a question for the designer. 45 Design out of Alberta, Canada. And them Canadians, they're weird anyway. I mean, they, they, buy, they buy milk in bags. I mean, come on. Let's be serious here for a moment. Anyway, I'm just picking on them. I find it odd that you've got a designer out of Canada that's designing pretty trippy, pretty crazy uh, folding knives when you can't actually ship these knives to Canada. It's illegal now to cross that border with a locking folder. So I'm wondering how they got their prototypes in order to to approve them and, and all that kind of good stuff. I do know some knife traders in the community that uh, have dealt with Canadians. And what they'll do is they'll take the, the blade out of the knife, they'll ship the frame, they'll ship the blade in a different box. And I, I guess that's worked for them. I don't really know. I personally have not tried that. But yeah, apparently you send a folding, locking folding knife into Canada, it'll get snagged at their, whatever their custom version of customs is um, at the border and it won't make it to the recipient. So I'm, I'm not obviously Canadian, so I'm not well versed on their laws. I just know that that's the, uh, the rumor that's been going around for a while. Okay, anyway. Does this uniquely designed flipper tab actually work? And is it better or worse than a standard one? It definitely works. I'm not completely in love with it. You are pulling straight back, just like you would on an EMP EDC nimble. But that's a large square corner of the, the blade tang. This is a very small thing that you're having to hit. And one thing I'll say that I, I really appreciate is a lot of companies that have, and I'll just show you what it looks like on the Nimble, one of these type of flipper tabs where you're pulling straight back. What a lot of those companies are doing, they're not remembering that there's follow through for your fingertip and it'll come to a sharp corner at the, at the, the, the corner here of the frame. But concept, and, and maybe it was designed like this by 4T5 design, not sure, they were smart enough to give you a very smooth area here so you're not hitting a sharp corner of titanium or stainless steel. So it's not problematic in any way. It actually does work pretty well. Now, I wish that it had a bit more of a standard flipper tab just because for the way that I personally flip, I would get better leverage. On a straight pullback design like this, I think it needs a little bit of a stronger detent so that you feel that more positive engagement and that more rocket-like firing. But it does work, and it works pretty well. Uh, I have yet to fail it. I mean, I, I suppose I could really, really try and just barely touch it. Yeah, you can. But it's gone to full lock every time that I've flipped it open. Now, you also have... This large fuller here that allows you to reverse flick as well. 
and they've done some very severe jimping on the spine of the blade and left that corner going on here so you can front flip it as well. I think for me, I prefer reverse flicking it. It is a small knife though, so you've got to kind of have it in your hand just the right way. And let's show you just how small that is. Let's compare it to the EMP EDC Nimble, which is still among my absolute favorite knives made in the past few years. And uh, I own a few variations of them and I absolutely love them. And you see that the, the Nimble is quite a bit bigger, actually. So if we do this, you can see that the Nimble is substantially bigger, actually, by about half to a three quarter of an inch, I'm going to have to say. And something that's even smaller is the Devo Knives Nip. Now, I love the Nip. I think it's a sweet little knife. It's only a little bit smaller. And, but this particular version being made of carbon fiber makes it uh, substantially lighter in weight. It doesn't have the heft that the Rafe does. So as far as small knives go, it's really small, but it's not anything crazy like the, the Devo Nip. As a matter of fact, let's go ahead and talk about the actual size right now. The specs on this overall length is only 6.11 inches. That is super small, guys. Blade length of 2.6 inches. They're using a uh, blade stock of 157 thousandths of an inch thick, which is four millimeters thick. Again, the blade material is uh, S35VN. They're calling the blade style a Warncliffe. I think it's a little bit more of a sheep's foot. A Warncliffe would have a completely straight edge. It wouldn't have any curvature to it. And also a sheep's foot is going to have this curvature here at the uh, end of the blade. So I would prefer to call it a modified sheep's foot. And the uh, weight, again, is 3.8 ounces or 108 grams. So those are the, uh, the basic specs for you right there. I think the size and the weight make this a good candidate for a lot of people in an EDC role. It's very tiny. It's very easy to make disappear in your pocket. One of the touches I really like on this is the, the, bl the anodized blue titanium quarter-length backspacer that wraps around the butt of the knife as well. I really like the contrast. I like how it looks. And I'm actually going to uh, have to commend them. Normally, I, I'm not a big fan of steel liners inside of an all-titanium knife that usually is done to make it cheaper. But I like it because they've polished the steel. And so you have this matte blue, this mirror polished steel, and then this bead blasted titanium that gives it a really expensive look when you look at the finish work that's been done here. I was immediately impressed by that. Now I'm gonna say this too, because when I first opened the package, I was not impressed by this knife. I wasn't even really all that excited about it, especially when, you know, I was carrying a knife that was much more standard in size. Here is a, uh, here is the James brand, the Barnes, still one of my favorite medium sized EDC knives. I think it's so phenomenal, so well made and, and it's an uh, integral. So it's, it's really, really desirable. But there is your size difference between what you may be carrying as a standard in a three and a half inch bladed folder compared to how small the Rafe is. Now, the size of the Rafe didn't turn me off at all. I was just kind of like, I don't know if I really dig this blade shape at all. I don't know if I really dig ending the fuller and then having this weird notch. I just, I, I really wasn't sure. And then I played with it for a few minutes. I tried opening it in a variety of different ways. And I was holding it and going, you know what? For a teeny tiny knife, 
I'm actually kind of digging this. And the more I played with it, obviously, the more it grew on me. I think if I were to change one thing about this, well, besides not having that, um, is I really like when you look at the beveled portions on any speed holes. I like those to be satin or polished. And I think that would have been a really nice two-tone effect that would have matched up a lot with other things that they had already done that with. So I would have liked to have seen that done. I think it would have been a nice, nice visual design choice. Not something that's needed to be done, of course, but I think it would have really added to it. I really like the jimping. Normally, I'm more into very, very fine line jimping. I didn't bring anything out here that's jimped. Well, this has a little bit of jimping on the nip. This isn't fine line either, but I, I usually prefer something that's a little bit finer. But this very large, exaggerated jimping works exceptionally well. When you push the flesh, the meat of your thumb into it, you lock in and you do not move. So very, very well done on that. And once again, I have to commend Concept Knives because they're able to do a lot of really cool things at really affordable prices. Now again, whether you want to consider this budget or not, it is still affordable and it's high value. You're getting a low price point and you're getting really good materials and good build quality. And I had avoided concept knives for years because I thought they were going to be a flash in the pan, another Me Too brand. And they're not. They have come out with some really unique designs, both by collaborating with designers such as they've done here and also designing their own models in-house. I think that they've done an admirable job of bringing out a lot of really, really different knives, even within their own collection they tend to do something very, very different from the last thing that they offered. So they're different from everybody else that's out there, and they are even different within their own collections, which I think is a really, really great thing with so many cookie-cutter designs coming out over the past few years, especially from that region of the world. I think that uh, the concept is really doing a great job. To the point where maybe it, it's a brand that I might consider doing one of my future collaborations with. I have a lot in the hopper right now. For those that don't know, next week the, the, the V2 variants of the Caladen will be dropping. And then my Scaphoid Flipper will be dropping very, very shortly after that. Then we have uh, a big surprise coming. The, uh, the Tibia Flipper will be coming from a wonderful company out of Spain. My Hellraiser Flipper is now finally underway after two years of being stalled. Now that one is on the way, so there's, there's a whole bunch of cool stuff coming uh, that I'm excited about. And I'm always on the lookout for a, a brand, a company that can do really good quality for good pricing. And I'm happy with the prices that I'm at for, for my models because all of mine are between $250 and $300. They will be going up higher for stuff like the Hellraiser and things like that, probably closer to the $400 range. But I would love to be able to come out with a knife in the $150 range in one of my designs, for sure. I think that would be really cool, because it opens up the opportunity for more people to own your work. So, uh, concept is definitely one of those brands that I would consider doing that with. I think that they've been doing a bang-up job with everything that I've reviewed over the past year or two. I really can't think of any that I didn't outright dislike, uh, that I, I'm sorry, that I outright disliked. And I think even the ones where maybe the design wasn't fantastic, the build quality was great, the materials were great, and the price points were great, that kind of forced you to fall in love with them. So there's that as well, and I think they're doing a really good job on all of that. So anyway, I'm out of here for now. I want to thank you guys, as always, for joining me. If you like the video, please click like on the, uh, the video and uh, subscribe, please, if you've watched. 
any more than one of my videos and you come back and go, hey, I kind of like the stuff this guy brings out, subscribe. The more subscribers I have, the, the, the more views go up, the more I'm able to bring out to you, the more I can justify the time that I spend in photography and sitting down to do the videos and then editing the videos just makes everything all the better. And I appreciate you guys that have been sticking around for so many years now. I love you and I'll see you on the next video.